cultural mistakes, a lot. And I think anybody that knows me has probably been a victim of some of my uh, foot in mouth moments, uh, things I say without speaking, not thinking that they're going to offend. But um, my story tonight is a little bit different and it's very personal, so bear with me. Um, I guess, first of all, I shouldn't be here at all. I just, I shouldn't be here. What am I doing in Ireland, and why have I been here for 17 years? It's definitely nothing I planned on. So, um, and the setting is interesting too, because my grandmother was in a setting like this when she was 14 years of age in Ireland. And uh, I'll tell you about that later. But my story has to do with my grandmother and how one of my mistakes regarding my grandmother brought me to Ireland. So, um, where to begin? Um, I guess I'll begin with my parents. My parents were from Clontarf and Carlo, and they emigrated in the 1950s looking for jobs. I'm sure that sounds familiar to a lot of people. Um, and uh, they met over there, and my dad was basically on the run from his own father, who was a garden superintendent. And my dad had um, <laughs> failed out of veterinary school because he liked to gamble and play snooker and uh, go to Jamais, actually. Um, he loved that. So he was off on the land. His mother bundled him, to him, him into a plane, and off he went. And my mother was there to be a nurse. So they met. They got married. They had me, um, this awkward child who asked a lot of questions, didn't really want to talk to people, and just read books all the time. And when I was told, okay, we'll bring anywhere you want to go. What's your favorite thing? Where do you want to go? The library. So I would literally, the library would open it. 7, 8 a.m., and I would spend all day there, 12 hours, reading, reading. I knew all the librarians. I knew Library Cat. I knew all the secrets, you know, everything. But I was a very awkward child. I didn't really get on with kids. I didn't understand them. I thought they were boring. I was an only child for eight years, and um, I spent all my time talking to parents and adults and debating with them at the table and everything. So anyway, probably my best friend at this time was my grandmother. My grandmother... Maggie O'Toole Rice from uh, County Carlo, um, on the side of Mount Leinster, lived in the attic of our house. Now, my aunt, her daughter, usually when I'm telling this story, interrupts and says, Margaret, she didn't live in the attic of your house with the storage and the books and the mattresses. She lived on the floor of your house. So just when you're telling the story. So, okay, so my grandmother, you can tell I grew up among women who edited everything I said, um, when I was allowed to speak at all. Um, and uh, she said, okay, she lived on the third floor of the house. So I would come in from school, and I was delighted not really to be in school and having to talk to kids or anything. Um, and then I would come in, throw my book bag down, get apple, glass of milk, and go running the three flights of stairs up to where my grandmother lived. And I'd walk in the door, and there she'd be sitting in the armchair like she always was, and she'd be crocheting. And she'd have these balls of wool at her feet, and every day they'd be a different color. And she'd say, now, Margaret, you sit there next to me and wait until I tell you the story about the time that Josie was walking down the lane. Do you remember the lane with the sy sycamores? And the night fell, and all of a sudden, he got an awful shiver up his back. And wouldn't you know, he saw a ghost. And the next day, his hair was white as snow. Right, and so she'd go on and she told these stories. They were absolutely magnificent. And I was scared to death when night fell because there were the banshees and there were these things. And she was from a place where they spoke a different language. And all my friends called her the woman who talked funny, you know, because we didn't live where other Irish people lived in Long Island in Garden City. My parents talked funny and my grandmother talked funny and I lived in a funny little house and I was a funny little girl who didn't like to talk to kids. But anyway, <laughs> great, great start in life, right? So anyway, so Grandma was terrific. And a lot of the stories that she told weren't just about this kind of semi-mythical place called Ireland, or mystical, I should say. They were about love. They were about when she fell in love with Arthur Rice. And when she did, she was about 10 or 11. And Arthur was 14 years older than her. And he was a member of an IRA flying column in Carlo. And my great-grandmother, Maggie O'Toole, future Rice's mother, did not approve. So my grandmother would say, well, I'm going to Mass now, Mom. And she'd go and she'd meet him on the riverbank for, you know, 
stolen kisses, and she was supposed to be at church. She was a very young girl, and he was a very dirty old man. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I, she was a powerful influence on my life because these stories were amazing. They were absolutely amazing, and I always wanted to be with Grandma. So I spent a lot of time sitting there listening to Grandma. But of course, you grow up, you get older, and you have to talk to other kids. Kind of annoying, but I had to talk to the other kids. And then I became interested in sport, and I started talking, and I probably saw less of Grandma. And I went to college, and then my college graduation day came, and by this time, my grandmother had gotten older, she moved up in Boston, and she drove down with my uncle. Um, in the car for five or six hours. He'd become a sociologist up in Boston. He was from Ireland as well. And uh, he said it was the first time I listened to her in like 40 years. And he said, she's an amazing story. I said, yeah, they're stories. They're great. They're great stories. And he said, but I don't think they're just stories. I said, oh, come on. What? Oh, yeah, the story of like uh, the first time she emigrated to the States where she made moonshine and she sold it to the speakeasies in Coney Island. Like, that's real. Give me a break, right? And he's like, I, I don't know. I'm like, you're a sociologist. Surely you know. So we had this kind of heated debate back and forth, back and forth. And I said, and he, and I said oh, yeah, and she was in prison, right? And he said, she was in prison. I said, she wasn't in prison. You can't, like, she's grandma. I go up and get sweets from her, butterscotch and mint sweets. And when I'm coming up the stairs, out, I go, Grandma, come up, I'm, put your teeth in. Because I was really afraid of anybody without teeth. I'm sorry, I'm almost there. So anyway, the main part of this is that I had forgotten. And my big mistake was that I didn't listen to her. I didn't listen to her. And when I came to Ireland, I found that it was all true. It was all true. I found her prisoner number in Kilmainham Jail. She was 14. She, I wrote an article about it for the Irish Times, and it was published, and she died 24 hours later. And that is true, true as God. And it's like she had passed on the story. So a lot of what I do today is because I want women to have a voice in this society, because my grandmother didn't, and my mother didn't, and a lot of other people don't. So when it comes to mistakes, that was a big one, but it brought me here and it's shaping what I'm doing now. So thank you, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs>